Hi, I'm Andre, and I'm a black nerd with a review for you, better reviews, Jim and the Holograms. I'm, no, I'm not gonna give you the good. <laughs> I don't know if there's any good. Look, I already made a video about Jim and the Holograms. I filmed a reaction video of me and Krista Sparkles after we left the movie. If you ever wanna see a person break down, watch that video. I do feel bad for the girls though. I thought the girls in this movie that played Jim and the Holograms as actors, they did fine with what they were given. Molly Ringwald gives a great performance. It's not their fault. I mean, they just did what they had to do as a job. Sometimes you just get hired as something and you just gotta do it no matter what ends up being the end product. I know this pretty well. But why did it fail? That's what I'm curious about. Well, it's because this movie suffers from an identity crisis. It wants to be a reboot film. It also wants to be nostalgic. It also wants to hit its target audience, promote girl power, and it fails on all of those levels. Definitely fails on the nostalgia level. This movie should not even been called Jim and the Holograms. Jerrica is not a co-owner of Starlight Records who has a holographic machine that turns her into Jim. No, that's all gone. Jerrica's just some average teenager who's had a video uploaded on the internet masquerading as Jim, and after 36,000 views, she becomes a success. Eric Raymond instead we have Erica Raymond, her son, Rio. Rio is no one's son in the original series. He wasn't Eric Raymond's son, but for some reason he's Eric Raymond's son in this case, and also does not look like he's a teenager. This dude looks like he's 30, and he's playing like a, oh, I'm a college student. No, I believe Paul Rudd was a college student in Clueless. I do not believe you a college student. I found out that he's the same guy who played the high school student in that Jennifer Lopez movie, The Boy Next Door. Who keeps casting this adult in kid roles? Showtime synergy, she does that with her earring but it means nothing. It means nothing. Synergy in this movie is a little Eevee BB-8 Echo knockoff that rolls around and goes boop, 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 and shows holographic images of video cassettes of Jerrica's home movies who hardly have Kimber, her sister, in them. It's just Jerrica and her dad. Oh, did I also mention that Synergy beatboxes? They have a moment where Jerrica and all the girls sing a song and Rio starts singing with them for some reason and then Synergy just comes out <laughs> Did you hate that? That happened in the movie. The only hologram that happens is when Jerrica finds all the pieces of Synergy to make him fully functional. We'll get to that later. And then Synergy projects a hologram of her dad telling her that he loved her. Again, just her, not Kimber, her sister. Jerrica, you are my gem. Kimber is another child I had. The other two girls, you could have just written them out. Aja is just there to be like, I'm the tech Asian girl and I'm a hacker. I'm a klepto, I steal things all the time. And Shayna just is there. She's just got nothing. Sorry Shayna and Aja, you're just ethnic background for the white stars. While a couple of the pop songs in this movie are a little cute, the gym theme song is nowhere to be found in this movie. I would have accepted a punk rock remix, a dubstep tribute, electronic Skrillex, whatever Daft Punk thing you want to do to Jim, rap it out. I don't care. Should you leave outrageous motherfucker? I don't want to take it any of that. Just some version of the theme song in a movie about Jim and the Holograms. No, instead we get patronizing lines like one time Jerrica is in an 80s outfit and the girls walk around and go, you are truly, truly outrageous. Oh, and don't get me started on Rio talking to Jerrica about how she needs to find herself because Jim is just all glamour and glitter fashion and fame. Seriously? You gonna say that line with a straight face? That's just as bad as More Than Meets the Eye from the Transformers movies or Heroes in a Half Shell from the Ninja Turtles movie. How dare you! The only true homage to the original series that you get is very early in the film. So the girls have to clean out their aunt's garage. Aunt is played by Molly Ringwald. She's poor and she's about to lose her store and her home if they don't get any money. Even though Jerrica has this synergy robot that can move around, make noise, and project holograms. Apparently that's not worth anything. And they find a bunch of old 80s clothes and put them on and do like a pretend music video and the clothes that they're wearing are very reminiscent to what Jim and the Holograms wore and looked like. I mean, it's a Halloween Party City version of it, but it's still something. I'll take what I can get. Christy Marks, the creator of Jim, Samantha Newark, the voice of Jim, and Britta Phillips, who was the singing voice of Jim, all make cameos in this movie. Kind of feel like they were at it at the last minute. I remember seeing some article where Christy Marks, the creator of Jim, said she didn't even know the movie was being made until the day before the trailer came out. So I think some reshoots happened, but at least that was nice of them to be like, all right, we gotta give these Jim fans something since we pretty much ignored everything else about this franchise. Let's throw them in. But look, it's okay if you take an old property and wanna reboot it. 
say what you will about those Bayformers. If you are mad about them not being faithful to the original Transformers, that's totally fine. You're allowed to have that judgment. But you cannot argue that whether you like or hate those movies, they have created their own identity. They were able to cater to a brand new audience who didn't have the nostalgia glasses on and it was enough to make them a success. At least you made the bold choice of saying, sorry nostalgia fanboys, I don't listen to you, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. This movie fails at that. It gives us the same generic teen pop music story that we've seen in every single film or that episode of Saved by the Bell where they had the Zack attack. A lot of people are comparing this to Josie and the Pussycats which had a similar plot which is funny because Josie and the Pussycats was a satire of these types of groups and if I get one more movie with that stupid line about like I'm tired of all these manufactured pop songs I want people who make real music and you follow it up with a manufactured pop song that doesn't sound like real music no one's asking you to preach about real music versus manufactured pop music I got no problem with manufactured pop music if I want to listen to some cheesy pop I will do that but don't just sit here and get on your high horse and say I want real musicians when every song you play has been cheesy manufactured pop auto-tune real music shut up but you can't really compare the plot of this to Josie and the Pussycats because it leaves that entirely to become a national treasure film. I am not joking. And they find out that Synergy is missing pieces. Jerrica's family used to live in LA, so for some reason her dad decided to hide various pieces of Synergy throughout different parts of Los Angeles, and when she finally puts it all together, it's just a hologram to tell her that he loves her. Why? Seems to be a very important message, feel like you could just have given this to her when you knew you were dying, and then she would just had it from the get-go. Why did she have to travel all around Los Angeles to find him? And the places they are at are so ridiculous. It's like one's in a board underneath the Santa Monica Pier and she had to move a pipe that was making a weird noise when wind came through it to find it. She's in a concert. The music went out but she's like we're gonna keep going. We're gonna play it acapella. There's a wall of guitars, right? Like there's just guitars all over the wall. She picks one guitar, picks it up, start playing it. Turns out that guitar, if you turn a crank on the back of it, opens up and find a new piece of synergy. She's freaking goony. So early on, Erica Raymond takes Jim's old earring. She's like, oh, these plastic things, I'm gonna put these away. And she puts it in her safe. I would just think like, hey, Jim, I don't like your earrings. Just put them in your pocket. But instead, she's like, I'm gonna keep them. She needs those earrings to finish up synergy. So they break into Starlight Records to get those earrings. Rio helps them break in. Why would you break into the place where one of the people that's breaking into the place works there and the rest of the people are artists for that record label? I feel like you could just walk in and go, hey, I need to go get something from this room. And the security guard be like, okay. This is them trying to put a little bit more of that nostalgia of, hey, Jim had adventures. Let's throw some adventures in there. But you're not even trying really well with that. This, of course, is to set up the fact that there's a secret will from Erica's husband. Erica's husband actually gave the company to Rio when he was ready to take it over and not give it to Erica. She could hide the will and give it. We've done this before. Blah, 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 blah. Turns out that Rio gets to run the company. Not Jerrica. The one thing that Jerrica had in the original series was that she was a owner of a record label and you took that away. And this movie fails with its target audience. It is trying so hard to be hip. Like, hey, we're adults and we think this is what the kids are into. Isn't that right, Scooter Braun and guy from Paranormal Activity movies? We know what girls like. You know, guys, just mentioning Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter doesn't make you hip all of a sudden. Here's how hip this movie is. When it wants to make a transition from one scene to another, you know what it uses? Google Earth. Because that's on your phones. Ah, we're hip. So not only is this a movie about music, it's also a movie about YouTube. Now, look, 36,000 views in 24 hours is an amazing number for anybody who is a creator, especially if it's your first video. That's a really good job. But for Erica Raymond to do a press conference, reach out to these kids, send them up to Los Angeles, give them a full contract, all this craziness for 36,000 views. There are people on YouTube who sit in their bathrooms with acoustic guitars and then gotten 36,000 views. I almost feel like it was supposed to be 36 million and someone forgot to say the line right and they just went, whatever, we're not gonna retake that again. Sorry, Shayna, she said 36,000, we're just going with it. I'm not knocking 36K, that's a great job, but I don't think it's worth this entire plot of film that happens afterwards. Signing somebody up in a really bad contract after one popular video, that doesn't sound like a record label. That sounds like a multi-channel network. Hey -o! They were trying to mix YouTube clips with the movie. The music would then be part of the background. I was like, okay, that's a good way to start off a scene. But then there's moments in the movie where it's just nothing but YouTube clips. The beginning of the movie is nothing 
but YouTube clips. And then even when they start trying to do the music as a background, they'll still cut back and forth between the movie and the actual YouTube clips. It kind of felt less like an innovative idea after a while and just started feeling like padding. Then out of nowhere, they do an anti-bullying statement where they have Jim reading her Instagram and it's a bunch of videos, which are all connected, by the way. So when one ends, the first one starts with the right word. I was bullied and no one understands me, but I listen to Jim and she makes me feel better. I'm like, okay, that's a good concept, but that really has no point right now in this movie. Before this movie even got started, they did this contest where they were like, show us your videos of you being a Jim fan and you might be in the movie. And they used those clips in this movie to talk about the new Jim. Here's what fans are saying about Jim. And it's these videos that people submitted in from YouTube talking about the old Jim, but they're referencing the new Jim. They misuse their content. And then on top of that, they add cameos from The Rock and Chris Pratt and Jimmy Fallon and Alicia Keys. I ain't dumb, Universal. Rock, Fast and Furious, Universal Property. Jimmy Fallon, NBC Universal with Tonight Show. Chris Pratt, Universal with Jurassic World. Y'all just call people on their set and said, hey, say something about Jimmy in front of this iPhone real quick. We're gonna use it in the movie, see you later. And Chris Pratt's one is really weird because he says something like, oh yeah, me and Jim used to date for uh, six weeks. First off, aren't you married? <laughs> you got on affairs, she ain't trying to date Jim. And also, isn't Jim like a teenager in this movie? She's like 17, 18, so that really doesn't make any sense which that was my other problem. Why did they make them teenagers? They could have made them college students or early 20s. No, no, no. Because we gotta hit that teen audience. We gotta make them teens. This movie has the audacity to put a stinger at the end <laughs> to act like this is the beginning of a trilogy. The misfits who we originally thought were not gonna be in the movie actually do have a cameo with Kesha as the lead of the misfits as pizzazz. That's when the movie got good. Where the misfits, our songs are better. We're gonna get her. I'm like, all right, all right but I'm excited now. And then the movie ends. So they're setting it up for for a sequel. That was your movie right there. We don't need a Jim origin story. This ain't freaking Batman. I don't need Jericho Begins. I'm sorry, but with Jim and the Holograms, you can't think you're gonna get two or three movies out of this thing. You need to just blow your wad on that right at the first run. If you get a second film, congratulations, take them to Paris or London or something, do some international thing, but you need to give everything you got to that first movie. You can't be holding back going, hmm, we're gonna make two or three of these things, guys. You just wait. <laughs> no. This movie had a $5 million budget, only $5 million dollars. That alone shows you didn't care. I know online web series that had bigger budgets than $5 million. $5 million at that point, you could have just kickstarted this movie. Put this thing on GoFundMe or Indiegogo. Get some Patreons on you. I just, I don't even, I don't get it. I don't understand how many ways that you F this movie up. People out there, myself included, weren't huge gym fans and that wasn't what upset them. For whatever reason, whether it was a nostalgia property or a girl's property or whatever you want to think of this, this movie doesn't give you anything different and it doesn't honor the nostalgic property it's based on. This was a movie that was clearly made with no heart at all and that is why people got upset. You shouldn't have ran into this going, this is a girl's movie or this is a teen movie. You should have said, here's a property, here's the great elements of it, music, technology, and sci-fi and adventure, something that we can play with and make it a good movie. You didn't do that and this is why you failed. You have failed this property. So if you want your gym, watch the old series, read the comic books that are out, or just don't worry about it at all. And I just pray that Rainbow Bright, Strawberry Shortcake, and the Care Bears get a better chance when they eventually get rebooted to the big screen. I love you like a play cousin. I'm Audi 5000, Chain Chomp, Yomp, and Power Rangers. Learn your lessons from this, please. Yo.